Yeah, you comfortable? Hi, I'm Brian Cocommons, and these are my two dogs, which I adopted. Right, this is Sam, who I adopted about a little over a year ago, and this is Victoria. She's five. Sam just turned three. Now, when I first met Sam, I was like, "What a nice dog!" Well, he was in four homes. It didn't make sense to me why he was in four homes. But after looking at him, I said, okay, I will make you my dog. And I did. And he made me his owner. So I brought him home. He pulled on lead. It was sharp. It, you know, I knew that he didn't have a lot of training, if at all. Right? He sat sometimes. But when I took him out in the back and I let him run, right, he took me down. Literally. He ran right into me. He's 133 pounds. It's like a linebacker or a Buick. So I'm on the ground. He goes, isn't this fun? Jumps on me and starts some heavy mouthing. Enough. So, good. And he thinks it's a fun game. I'm kind of appalled and going, this is right on the edge. So he taught me a couple of things about him. One, he didn't have any respect for people. Two, that was instilled by people teaching him to play roughly. And three, I needed to get to work right away. And you're going to find with most shelter dogs, the more and the earlier you start teaching them, the better they are. You can't influence history. You know, a lot of the information from the shelters is incorrect or people don't tell the truth. So the information you're getting is not really all that good. The other big thing is you don't know who the dog is until at least 30 days of them living in your home. Now, if you start your training, as soon as the dog comes into your home, a lot of the bad habits can be avoided and or changed. And that's the importance of training. You want to start it as soon as the dog comes into your home. And I'm going to be showing you through the series on how to go about doing that and having a good time with it. You want to base this on two things. One is behavior, right, where they're listening to when they're being given a direction. The other is relationship. In order to have a balanced dog, you need both behavior and relationship. And we get to do the teaching and also really teaching the dog that when they do listen, something good is going to happen. And that can be a toy, that can be praise, that can be a treat. So instilling that initially when they get in the house, if the dog's been jumping, great, we'll teach it how to sit and not to jump. Makes a huge difference. And it also is going to guarantee you success with your new dog if you start that training early. Now, after working with hundreds of shelters, and my own experience with the shelters I adopted these dogs from, right, again, that information is not correct. A lot of times people see fear on the dog, and they go, oh, it's okay. You're really helping support the fear. What you want to do is get happy, and again, start teaching right away, where the dog starts forming communication and relationship with you which instills confidence in most dogs. And another hint here, when I brought these guys home, I didn't invite a bunch of people over to meet my new dog. It's overwhelming for a new dog. Get it intro introduced to the household and the family, and especially the house. What I did with both these dogs when I first brought them home is they were on leash, so they learned to go throughout the house and get used to it, and knowing every room is part of the house. So being on leash and taking them throughout the house is really going to be critical. The other factor here is Sam was clean. He never made a mistake. Eh, not this one so much. Right? She made a couple of mistakes in the first couple of days. So I looked at my feeding schedule, my watering schedule, and keeping a log of what she's doing when she went out so I could figure out, okay, it's been three, four hours. You're going to need to pee. Yes? So as far as keeping that log, and many times there are a couple of different people who walk the dog. This way you can know exactly what the dog is doing and seamlessly get to that house breaking. The other big tool I use for most dogs is crate training. Right? Crating the dog allows you to one, teach the dog there's downtime in the house, and the other, it's a safe place and if it's introduced properly, they love their crates and plus they won't dirty in them unless they're forced to. One of the major training tools, especially if you're adopting a dog, is establishing a safe place for the dog. Also, where if you have to go out or if you need to take a break, the dog is someplace safe to go. And they like going there. So we're going up, going to go over crate training, how to instill that. But the first thing is, okay, what type of crate, how big? Right. Part of this, if you're going to be traveling with your dog, 
This type of crate, the plastic kennel, is usually what the airlines insist upon. So that would be a good investment for you. Or you can get a wire crate. These fold up easily. Thing is, when you buy the crate, depending on the age of your puppy or dog, you want to buy it for the adult dog. The way to figure out the proper size is the dog should be able to stand up, turn around, and lie down comfortably. Now, with some of your giant breeds, you don't see him, but there's a St. Bernard in here. When he's uh, growing, which he is now, he's six months old, when they had him as a puppy first, they do sell dividers with the metal crates, the wire crates. So you can section it off. If the puppy has too much space, many times they'll go and make a mistake, so that divider is really handy. But when you're buying a crate, buy it for the adult so you don't have to buy two or three different crates. Once you have the crate, you make it comfortable, you put treats in there, you feed the dog in there, and it's an absolutely wonderful tool. And that adjustment period, especially for uh, shelter dogs, it really takes it and makes it seamless because this becomes their safe place. And you get to teach them that they get to be comfortable and they're going to get treats and how much fun it is going into their kennel. So, Vic, this is Victoria, my dog. She's five years old. I doubt she was ever crated. So she's not comfortable with it, or hasn't been. So I've been working on this. One of the things I do is I teach the behavior and get the dog comfortable with that before I link the word. So I'm going to use her name and praise her right away. Victoria, good girl. Excellent, good girl, good. One of the things you want to notice as you start this, the dog is probably going to extend the back legs and kind of stretch to get into it. You need to work them through that where they want to get into it and they're running in all the way and they're happy about it. Hey you, good girl. Excellent, good girl. Oh, look at you. Who is the best? Is this a good game? Yes, is it? Good girl. And I'd leave the crate out so when you have the dog with you, when you walk by the crate, I'm going to put the treat in the back of the crate. Oh, look at that. Oh. So it's kind of a bonus when I throw this in, she gets to the back of the crate so she goes all the way in. All right, and then she finds who? Buffet. Whose idea was this? Whose? So, <clears throat> you want to practice this often. Make it a game. And make sure that, when, see, she's happy about this. She's like, this, whose idea was this? Good girl. Good. Yes. Good girl. Now she turns around, I'll reward her. All right, so she's doing pretty well with this. Now I'm going to link the word. You ready? Victoria, count. Good girl. Yes. And before she comes scooting out, I'm going to reward her again for holding it there. Victoria, count. Good girl, yo. Good. Yes, good girl. Good. So the more reps I do with this, in a matter of days, she'll be running into her kennel going, I love it in here. I'm also going to give her stuff to chew on when I leave her alone. And we'll go over what to give and what not to give in a later segment. So, if you want more information, go to greatpets.com. I have a list of products that I've selected that makes life easier for both you and your dog. Ready? Are you good? Yes. Count. Good girl. Excellent. Sit. Good. Now a lot of dogs jump because they get petted when they jump or they want attention. So the first thing I'm going to start doing with the dog once I get it in is have a treat. Bring my hand up. Reward. Good girl. Good. Yes. Good girl. Excellent. I'm not saying anything. I want her to understand that when she wants attention or a treat, she gets to sit instead of jumping up. Right? And I don't allow anybody to pet her when she does jump. So you can make this a game after she's sitting consistently and she's going, what do you want me to do? Boom, is this it? You go, yes, you're a rocket scientist. Reward. Okay, you ready? Yeah. 
you are such a good girl. Yes. I'll be teaching you more fun stuff with them because training should be fun for your dog, all right? And fun for you. It's so much easier than being this dominant routine, you know? Dominance is not an issue here. It's communication, understanding, and relationship. Do you understand? Yes. Do you? Yes, I think you do. Smart little dog. Consistently grooming your dog does a couple of different things. One, it creates relationship, and you have a good time when you're doing it. Two, it prevents them from getting stinky. And three, you get the dead hair out so it's not all over the house. Now, with my training facility, we're cleaning up all the time. Right? And with my dog, Sam, he is unbelievable. He may have short hair, but don't let it deceive you. And he just got groomed yesterday. So this is an ongoing battle. And instead of watching little hair bunnies, one of my favorite tools, and I got three of them, is the Dyson. This stick vacuum is like a full-fledged vacuum. I don't have to drag it out and plug it in. It's quick, it's easy, and it's unbelievably effective, and it handles dog hair. And believe me, in this facility, we have a lot of dog hair, and it doesn't matter if it's long or short, it manages to take it up really nicely. And what I especially like is you can get attachments to use on the furniture. I let my dogs on the furniture, so I need to vacuum that. The Dyson is really effective in getting that up, so it works absolutely great. So, not only grooming your dog, but knowing how to clean up after them. And it even picks up dog food. So, as I go through this and show you what to do with your dogs, how to have a better relationship with them, how to teach them the behaviors that you want, and get the um, best amount of joy you can get out of them. And yes, I let my dogs on the couch and I'm a dog trainer. But, and I'll show you this later, they have to sit and be asked to get up. They just can't jump up on the couch. You know, I'm going to have people spilling drinks all over themselves if he's hopping up. So, more on better behavior. And you can get more information and like us on greatpets.com and also Twitter and Instagram. See you later. Hug guys. Yes.